All right, so it's the mid 90s and you need a new car. You'd like to buy something small. You prefer for it to be American, but you want the careful construction and the reliability that you get with the Japanese brands. Well, there's only one real choice and this is it. This is a 1997 Saturn SW1 and today I get to review it. All right, welcome back to All Cars, y'all. I am John, and yes, this is a 1997 Saturn SW1. Isn't she gorgeous? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So a couple pieces of information before we jump into this 26 year old car. Uh, first off, if you are in the Charlotte area and you have a car you'd like to see me review on this channel, please reach out to me. Let's have a conversation. And today I wanna to thank Tommy for letting me take this out for a little while and experience it, get comfortable with it, and then be able to shoot this review. Number two, I'm not gonna pretend that I'm not gonna be unbiased today. See. In the mid 90s, I worked at Saturn. I actually worked at the retailer where this was actually sold, but I wasn't one of the ones who sold it. I was sent to their headquarters in Spring Hill, Tennessee. I went through a week's worth of training and yes, indoctrination. I visited the factory. I believed in this company. I believed in it very strongly, as a matter of fact. I believed in their focus on the customer, their focus on building a quality product, their labor relations, everything about this company I loved. And I'm so excited because this is the first time I've driven a Saturn in probably 24 years, something like that. And isn't she gorgeous? But anyway, this is an SW1. The SW means it is the station wagon. Now from Saturn's perspective, from here forward, it's basically just the sedan, but they put this little backpack on the back of it. You can tell by the black bumpers that this is an SW1, which is the base level. Up under the hood, what we have is a 1.9 liter Saturn single overhead cam engine pumping out about 100 horsepower, running through a four-speed Saturn automatic transmission on a Saturn space frame with their famous plastic body panels. The one other thing I wanna add in here is while these plastic panels, GM actually used something like this back in the 80s with their Fiero. There's actually a space frame underneath here and these are bolted onto it. This has side impact protection. It was fully, fully one of the safest cars out there in its size category. But these were innovative, loved by customers and also part of Saturn's struggle. See, these plastic panels resisted dents. They could still be scratched. The paint was designed to be a little flexible as the panel gave. But the problem is these panels actually shrink, 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 or expand depending on the outside temperature much more than metal does. So what happened is, is Saturn had to give these really large gaps right here so that these panels shrink and swell depending on the outside temperature, these will close up in summertime. This unfortunately gave the car a little bit of a crude or unfinished appearance relative to say the Honda Civics and the Toyota Corollas out there that had much, 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 much closer panel gaps because they were made of steel. These, I'd much rather have these and have a bigger gap here, but it was an issue that came up over and over again in reviews. Now I keep repeating Saturn because Saturn was founded by GM. It was actually a separate company started by General Motors, funded by General Motors. They built a whole factory. They designed their own frame. They designed their own engine. They built it at the factory. They designed their own automatic. They used some other random parts from GM suppliers, but this was not a rebadged GM car. This was a Saturn and it was a success and it built through their relationship they built with their customers. They built a passionate base of owners who loved it. And this is a really well-preserved example. It has about 91,000 miles on it, and it's not perfect. This panel here is a little bit funky, and there's a couple other little things like that that really don't matter. You can see on the dashboard that, well, the check engine light's on. Nobody knows why. But up front, what we've got is on the left, you've got manual windows, power locks. And what I really like is the fact that they've got plastic up top, but they've got this fabric in here. In a world where we have so many cars that are just plastic, 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 or different shades of plastic, to have a little fabric on it is a nice little touch. Shows maybe how far we've come from the past. Then in the middle here, we've got a vent over on the left, 
our gauges in front of us, a big happy speedometer, tachometer, fuel, temperature, all the necessities. On the left, we've got our turn signal, which is very chunky and clunky when you flip it back and forth. Steering wheel is just a steering wheel with horns on it and an airbag, no radio controls or anything like that. And then over on the right, we have our wiper controls. We've got two big happy vents in the center. We've got a little storage area for something in the front on the dashboard. And then we've got the radio down below. Now this is actually the upgraded radio. The base level radio is about half the size and it gives you a little area underneath it to throw stuff. Then down below, we've got our air conditioning, our HVAC controls, a slider across the top to direct the air. You got your hot and your cold. And then you've got this little rotator knob here that is your fan speed with an air conditioning on off button and then your rear window defroster. Down below, we've got a cigarette lighter and then a little cup holder, the cutest little cup holder for the cutest little bottle of water and an ashtray next to it. But what's cool is the ashtray is actually removable so you can have two cup holders. Then of course, we've got that Saturn four-speed automatic right there with a performance and normal button. Next in the center, we've got this little slot right here. You can use it for just about anything. I personally like to think that Saturn was so far ahead they gave us a place for our cell phones. Handbrake, and then this little storage area behind it where you can just throw random stuff, but the car had an option, a dealer installed option for an armrest that would actually take up that space right there. And then in front of the passenger seat, we do have a passenger airbag, and there's this little lid, this little eyelid across it. And what we were told from the engineers was that was there to stop the lid from flipping up and helping to direct the airbag towards the actual passenger. Now, hopping in the back seat, it's okay. This is a small car. We've got more of the same plastic. We've got more of the same fabric, roll up windows. It's a little tight here. This seat is where I sit. I'm about 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, so it is a little tight. I'm right here, but it's softly cushioned. So I can actually get back here. And the seat is kind of comfortable. It's a little, it's a little low, honestly. I. I wouldn't want to sit here on a road trip, but it'd be fine for getting around town, going out to lunch, things like that. It's fine. Split folding rear seats behind me, leading back to the cargo area. Let's go take a look at that. Oh, and in the middle here, well, there's nothing really to speak of. There's no power points, there's no USBs, there's no air vents, there's just a cigarette, an ashtray for the kids. Now around the back, there is no latch. There's no handle right here. You actually have to use the key to unlock it and then you open it up get a nice little cargo net right here get a little carpet underneath with your spare tire down below that and a really decent amount of space if you're picking up groceries or I think you could probably get three different bags back here I think part of it sideways caddy and wampered if you wanted to put your golf clubs in here it's a good usable space with a really really almost flush lift over right here fantastic and it makes you appreciate what we're missing with small station wagons all right guys my first time driving a Saturn in probably 24 years I'm so excited I can't stand it and now I wait on traffic yes power all right so First off, we have to remember this is a 26 year old car, so we have to give some allowances for it. Overall, it's in excellent, excellent condition. Uh, it's got a few rattles here and there, and it's got a, a gritty kind of feeling to it when you drive, but it does have 91,500 miles on it. And overall, it's kind of impressive how well this thing has held up. Now, one of the big knocks on Saturn was sound level. Saturn tried to address it with this redesign. And part of the problem was is it wasn't actually that much louder than some of its contemporaries. It was the quality of the noise. And specifically that engine up there has a timing chain, not a timing belt. So it sounds a little grittier than say the Singer sewing machine that you would get with a, a Honda Civic, for example. I also am adding new to my reviews, I've got a decibel meter on my phone. We pull it out, we press the decibel meter button, and we take a look, and we see this is about 70 decibels. That's a little high, honestly. Now, I don't have a comparison with something 
of a comparative era. Um, but looking at, say, the uh, Honda Accord or the Ford Explorer, much bigger, much more expensive vehicles, those are in the 63, 65 decibel range. So this is honestly a little noisy. And I think part of that may also be this big empty space behind me. Uh, the advantage and the disadvantage of a station wagon is you don't have a, a trunk separating you from some, some road noise. Overall, it's, it's fine. It's a little noisy, but I think if I turn the radio on, I wouldn't really have a problem with it. Now, one of the cool things about the owner is that he asked that I get this on the interstate. He wants me to get on and on ramp and give it the beans a little bit and see kind of how much punch this thing actually has. And I'm excited to do that here in a minute. Now, it's a almost surreal experience driving a 26-year-old car because, sure, all the aspects of it being a car are still there, but it feels so different from the vehicles we have today. This is so low compared to vehicles today. There's so much open glass work. There's so much sense of volume behind me, and there's not that sense of weight of mass that you get. The ride is actually compliant and not really harsh at all. This is a small, inexpensive car. That's what it was intended to be. It's not Germanic, but I would say it compares very favorably with specifically, say, the Civic, as I recall from this time period as well, maybe the Corolla or the Sentra. It doesn't feel Japanese, but it feels more Asian than it does you know, an American car like a Cavalier or something like that. It's really quite enjoyable and for a 26 year old car, it's kind of cool. So here's the on-ramp guys. I'm gonna come to a stop. And then as he said, I'm gonna give it some beans. Not a bunch, this is not my car, so I'm not absolutely flooring it. 40, 50, 60. Okay, so it's not super fast, but it is peppier than you would think. With only 100 horsepower, it doesn't sound like much, but it's not got a lot of mass to move around either. Really enjoyable. Really, really enjoyable. And now that we're at highway speeds, it, it feels great. It's not floaty at all, but it's also not harsh. And again, I want to repeat, for a 26-year-old car, there's no shimmies and shakes and vibrations and nonsense like that. It's fantastic. What a well-built car. I'm really, I'm kind of impressed, honestly. I'm kind of impressed. I would like to say that this car is getting better the longer I drive it. It's initial impressions getting in is that it's kind of gritty you know, that there, there's a shimmy and it's noisy and, and, and just a, a general sense of mechanicalness. But the longer you drive it, the better it feels. The steering is kind of quick, a little heavy, but not too much. It's just about perfect. Now, I love the size of the steering wheel. There is this cover on it, so it makes it feel thicker than it would standard, but it just tracks perfectly well and again I, I've got to say the ride is surprisingly good for a car of this era it's again it's not floaty it's not sharp it's not harsh there's a little bit of banging and crashing as you go over little bumps I think that's probably due to the age of the car but the longer you drive it the better it feels and for the time I've spent in it this seat is fantastically comfortable. It's not too narrow, it's not too short, and it's just soft enough, and the lumbar is just about perfect for my back. It, it's maybe a little short up here at the shoulder area, but other than that, it's been, it's fantastic. Oh, memories, guys, memories. <sighs> And I will say about the brakes here, they actually grip really well, but there's a lot of pedal travel before you really get any 
result. It, it feels like it wants to go all the way to the floor and then it just, it just doesn't, it just starts stopping. It's not a sports sedan and I'm not racing it anywhere. I was doing, you know, maybe 30 miles an hour right there, but it's got good responses. It really does. It's, it's, um, this, this is an absolute joy. It really is. I guess there's no reason to look for a backup camera, is there? Ah, oh, what a trip down memory lane, guys. This is a wonderful, fantastic, amazing car. I, I absolutely love it. And it brings back so many memories for me personally and how much I love the car, how much I love the brand. But ultimately, this makes me sad. See, this was kind of the heyday of Saturn. This was the second generation Saturn S series. Uh, the first one was more wedgy and they rounded everything out. They improved the styling a little bit. They tried to make it a little more quieter. The dashboard was actually replaced in the first generation, carried over to the second generation. And that's when they revised this body style and made it less distinctive, but probably more contemporary. And this continued along. And while it was a good seller, Saturn needed to have a return on the billions of dollars General Motors poured into them. And about three years after this car, in about 2000, Saturn started selling a larger car, car called the L Series. And it sold okay, and it was modestly competitive in the marketplace, but it wasn't a Saturn. It was just another General Motors platform with a GM engine, with a GM transmission, and it wasn't even built by Saturn, it was built at other factories. And it heralded what happened over the next eight years, where Saturn got a much wider selection of cars from a roadster to a minivan to uh, an SUV, but all of them were just other General Motors cars, whether they were Chevys or whether they were from Europe or whatever it happened to be, and it ruined the reputation. They used Saturn as a retailer for a bunch of other cars, but they didn't have what this had. It wasn't focused on dependability, durability, the customer, putting all of that first. So this is among the last of the great Saturns before General Motors literally watered down the entire brand and then ultimately killed it in around, uh, I guess, 2008. I love this car. I love what it represented and it just makes me sad to see it go. But now, I'm going to get back in and drive it just a little bit more before I have to return it to Tommy. Thanks for being here, guys. Show the channel some love. One other thing I want to add at the end here, guys, is they had the original owner's handbook here. And this is really, really cool. They're the people that actually sold this lady. And I think I remember him. But it's kind of neat because when you get in here... They actually have a welcome to the Saturn family message for owners. A different kind of company because they include pictures of the factory, of the people who birthed your car. from the Saturn team to you. A different kind of car company, absolutely.